A huge round of applause, please, for Mr. Matt Boyle. Matt, your time starts now. Yo, how are you guys doing tonight? <laughs> yeah, yeah, more energy though. How are you doing today? Thank you very much. My name is Matt Boyle. I come from Nova Scotia, Canada, and I, don't, I know you don't know where that is. Go to Toronto, head all the way to the East Coast, find the ocean and the lobster-shaped province. I come from the capital city of Halifax, and I'm so pleased to be here today to present to you guys my legacy cocktail, the Ocho Watchman. Now Bacardi to me, as a brand, it represents relentlessness. It is relentless in its approach to marketing its, its product all four corners of the globe. It's in over 150 countries, and that means it's very rare for you to travel anywhere and not find this icon iconic rum. It is uncompromising in its pursuit for quality. And this started, of course, with Don Facundo Bacardi Masso, who would only take the finest sugarcane from Santiago to Cuba, as well as the richest molasses, and revolutionizing rum making with barrel aging. And in the face of adversity, the Facundo family, Bacardi family, has always persevered. In 1960, when the Cuban government illegally confiscated rum production from Cuba, they didn't stop. They moved production to San Juan, Puerto Rico. They continued to establish their legacy. They continued to pursue their dream. Now my dream as a bartender started on stage, can't you tell? For 10 years, I performed in front of hundreds, sometimes thousands of people in a 10-piece hip-hop band as an MC. Don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes dreams don't pay. So with $300 to my name, I walked into the most prestigious cocktail bar in the east coast of Canada. I fibbed about my experience, and I got a job. I stood behind the wood, and I immediately fell in love with this craft. The people, the lights, the creativity, the vibrancy in which we work. I felt like I was on stage again. I felt like I was performing again. But this time, I was being paid. Thank you. But you know what? This rum to me is like poetry in motion. And Don Facundo is like a great poet. See, a great poet only uses the perfect amount of words, never too many, 
nor too few. Facundo would only choose the perfect amount of ingredients, never too many, nor too few. He liked to express his original character in his rum, build on those flavors and achieve balance. And that is the central goal to the Watchmen today, merely modifying Bacardi 8. So first, we start with an artichoke amaro, beautiful and earthy. This is going to build on all of the dark, sweet flavors of the rum. Coffee, toffee, caramel, smoke. Then the elegant Martini Bianco. This is going to highlight all of the lighter flavors. Green apple, fennel, grassy aromas, floral aromas. Then we have, for a touch of refreshment, Scrappy's grapefruit bitters. And to build on the barrel aging flavors, Angostura. Finally, the world famous Bacardi Ocho. <laughs> Beautiful caramel color, elegant mouthfeel. This is the world's premier sipping rum. You can make some noise if you want. I mean, <laughs> the Ocho. Now, when coming up with research and development for my cocktail, in Canada, we lost a world-famous poet and performer by the name of Leonard Cohen. Some of you may know him. Recently inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, at the end of the Watchmen movie, you can hear a Cohen song playing. And my favorite song by Cohen is entitled, First We Take Manhattan. Significant to this cocktail, as we have a play on the Manhattan, or more specifically, the El Presidente, Cuban rum and white vermouth. In the second stanza, he belts out, and then we take Berlin. <laughs> Significant, no? As I stand today, a proud Canadian in Berlin, I believe that it is our time to take Berlin. I believe we've been knocking at the door for a long time and that our bartenders need some global recognition. That song wasn't Nickelback. <laughs> but first, we must take Manhattan. Thank you, thank you, I appreciate that. So any great poet, whether it be Cohen, or myself, they watch over raw human emotion, they watch over society to convey their message. Any great rum producer, Facundo, they would watch over their ingredients and their distillation to craft the, pr the perfect product. Any great MC, Ian, you know this, you watch over the crowd, you watch over the stage, you gain all the energy, you keep the party moving. Word up. Any great bartender watches over their guests. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so pleased to present to you the sound of rum, the Ocho Watchman. Good up! I don't think I've ever seen Lee so calm and collected. He is obviously super confident. Well done, brother. Thank you. I think we have the most sophisticated MC right here, just sitting there sipping on a Zocho, smoking a cigar, and reading cocktail books. Yeah, they don't pay, it doesn't pay well, man. <laughs> Mate, what would you like to say, down the barrel, to all the bartenders in Halifax, and by the sounds of it, there were a lot of them involved in Legacy this year, yeah. who uh, supported you? It's not only Halifax, man, it's Vancouver, it's Calgary, it's Montreal, it's Toronto. I do it for my country. All right, big red swans for Canada. Thank you. Well done, brother. It's okay, Lee will clean up after you. Um, 
So how did these bartenders get here? The journey for most of them started some nine, ten months ago where they were tasked with creating a Bacardi cocktail, something that could stand up and last the test of time and live amongst the great Bacardi cocktails, the daiquiri, mojito, cuba libre, pina colada, and the modern greats, Lilatan, Vinceremos, made in Cuba. We have this wonderful history of fantastic cocktails, and perhaps today we've just witnessed a new one added to that grouping. Once I've created a cocktail, they have to take it to the world. Because we've all had great drinks in great bars, but if you can't find that drink in the bar next door, or in the bar in the next city, or in the bar on the next island, that drink kind of just lives there and, and doesn't travel and, and doesn't get shared and adopted by millions of bartenders around the world. So we challenge our bartenders to take their drink to the world. And we judge that. We give them the opportunity to make their drink, their bar, and themselves truly famous. So that's the first, probably biggest difference when you think about Bacardi Legacy versus any other old cocktail competition. Next, they have to compete against their mates, against their friends and their local industry. Refine their drink, hone their skills, perfect their performance, and then beat out the best that their nation has to offer. From there, they continue to promote, continue to do guest shifts, pop-ups, travel. If they can't, the drink travels to take the drink to the world. From there, we welcome them to this stage and we welcome them to the promotional campaign judging where both scores combined will equal the final ocho. And I don't know if you're aware, but the energy yesterday was good, but today it's fizzing because in a few hours, we will announce our final ocho. It's gonna be a big night. And then there's Ian Griffiths. Yeah, we've got something special planned after that as well. Judges, are you ready? Yeah? The thought of this next bartender making the final eight is terrifying. Because he's from Ireland, and I'm pretty sure most bartenders would be on a boat, be on a plane, and over the ditch in no time at all. Can I have a huge Berlin welcome for Connor Mars from Ireland? We good? Hello. Hello. Are we good? What's up, Berlin? How are we all doing? We good? Guys, it is an honor to be here. My name is Connor Myers. I'm representing Ireland. 
my bar back home in Dublin, the Exchequer, and most of all importantly, I'd like to present to you my legacy drink, Electric Avenue. <laughs> so what is Electric Avenue? Let me bring you back, back to my hometown, just about an hour north of Dublin, sat at the family dinner table with my mum. She was reading the newspaper, and she saw an ad for a bar job, and it was basically to work at Casa Bacardi at Electric Picnic, which is Ireland's biggest music stage. So she was like, you need to apply for this, you need to do it. I was like, yeah, <laughs> you know, typical young 20-something year old. I was like, I'll do it later. So next morning I wake up to my phone ringing. I'm like, hello? He goes, hi buddy, it's Alan Kavanagh here. I'm like, who's this guy? He goes, um, we received your resume and your cover letter. It's really good. You should definitely come down to Dublin next Friday at 3 p.m. I was like, eh, yeah, all right. My mum submitted a cover letter and a resume to this man beside me without me knowing. I literally, I hadn't a clue. So I was like, I just have to do it now. So a week later, I go down to Dublin and I walk into this bar, you know, real cool. And here's 50 other bartenders competing for the exact same job. It was a trial. I thought I won. I thought I got the thing already. I didn't. So I walked in. My heart sank. Genuinely, I had to run to the bathroom to get sick for a little bit because I was that nervous. Um, so I just went up there. I rocked it. Made three drinks. But I sort of left, you know, a bit. Oh, I wasn't sure. So walking back to get the bus. And I get a call from that Alan guy again. I'm like, yo, Alan, how's it going? He's like, mate, I've got good news, I've got bad news. The good news is, you know, you've you done really well and you tried your best. But the bad news is you're going to have to spend three days with me at Electric Picnic and the best bar team in Ireland. I got the job. Can you believe that? <laughs> this is all true, by the way. So I arrive to the coach. I sit down. This coach, is, it's full of energy. Everybody's buzzing. But I didn't know anybody, so I was a little bit sat back, a little bit reserved, not, not my usual self. And then we got to Electric Picnic, and when I heard that music and got behind that bar, just that boom, 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 boom. Something just awoke in me. This, these randomers, these people I didn't know, are now friends and family, and they just pushed me along. I remember the moment I just took a step back, and I just saw the sun, which is really rare in Dublin, hitting the crowd. Everybody's high-fiving, everybody's having a great time, but the bartenders, they held a key to this festival and this excitement and atmosphere. And this is what I want to create, is this excitement and atmosphere. So I took all those experiences and I asked myself, I asked myself three questions. Could I make a festival drink? Could I make a festival drink with a, with a, drink with a festival atmosphere that I could bring to bars around Ireland? And then I was like, can I make a legacy drink that maybe brought that around the world at every Casa Bacardi event? And then Electric Avenue was born. So we're going to kick into it, or rock down to it, as I should say. We're going to start out with a sugar syrup. You know, this is a simple drink. It's a summer style drink. It's got a crazy GP, so you're all going to love it if you own bars. And, <laughs> and our lime juice. So the sugar and lime, this is essentially going to be the DNA to our drink. It's going to be the base, as it is the base for a lot of fantastic Bacardi drinks. Next, we're going to add some pineapple juice. Again, this ends a beautiful, beautiful length and texture to the drink. It's also a little nod to, you know, tiki culture, having a good time. And what's a drink without pineapple? Am I right, Barney? <laughs> and then finally, we're going to add Bacardi Carte d'Oro. Beautiful notes of vanilla, butterscotch, and toffee. But I've always got this length of dried berries. So this is really the heart and soul of the drink. It lifts it out of the glass. No. And label out, because this isn't my first day. Now. Label out, this is not my first day. <laughs> Where are we going? I'm going to give this a little taste. Eddie Grant would be proud of that one. So, now we're going to add some crushed ice. Again, this is a festival drink. All you need is very simple ingredients that's available in any shop. A bar spoon cheeky smile and a good high five and you can make this drink anywhere in the world. So our ice is going to bring it right down. So like I've seen a lot of people with uh, cocktail shakers. Um, I don't know what you do for churning, but I hope you'll all cheer anyway. So can we give a big cheer for churning? Yeah. 
I know it's not as exciting and I'm bringing back a bar spin, but you know, you got to do what you got to do. So, we're going to add my straws now because the reason is this, I want you to sort of taste a drink first and experience that blend of pineapple, lime, sugar and rum and then when I use my last ingredient, then start mixing it through and just, you know, really get those dry berry notes. So, here we go. I'm going to add our port, a ruby port. So this is going to add a beautiful color to the drink and it's going to access those berry notes that I spoke about earlier that comes through in the rum. And finally, we're going to add a mint sprig. Although there's no mint in this drink, this is a salute to my boys and my family back home that brought me to festivals and taught me how to do what I do. If you work festival bars, you know that you pick mint for about four hours a day. So this is just my little wave to the boys back home. Um, I want to finish with this. I, I spoke about earlier about you know, being on that bus and being uncomfortable and a bit unsure of myself. And I'm, if I'm going to be honest, I, I felt like that this week. But just like my electric picnic family, this Bacardi Legacy family, the Don Pepe, the Barney Toy, the Dickie Cullimore, the Jacob Briars, all these great guys have made me a part of this legacy family. And guys, I'm so happy to present to you my legacy. <laughs> Electric <laughs> Avenue. <laughs> You'd be forgiven for believing that the Bacardi Legacy family is made up of three Kiwis. There are a few more nations involved, right? But we are proud to be here. Come here, mate. Uh, how do you feel? The chuck. <laughs> a little bit cheeky, but good, but good. Okay, well done. So, like I said, I was a bit terrified. If, if Connor goes to the final odd show, that half of Ireland bars will be empty and yeah. in Berlin. But they're good supporters. Mate. What I wanted to ask you, though, is how much pressure was there coming from the Exchequer? You had Kareem, you had Will, two of our previous Irish winners, and now you. How much pressure is there to, to hold up the name of the Exchequer? Um, there's a lot of pressure, but it's also a fantastic support system. You know, I work with Kareem, I work with Will. Those guys have been pushing me along and really helped me get here. Obviously, they've done so well, and I just really hope I can do them proud and my country proud and my family and friends and everyone. I just, just have a bit of fun and make some drinks. Well done. One of the nicest guys in bartending, Connor Mars. And you're not going to help Alan clean the stage either. Okay, so I think without putting things in the judge's mind, Connor did a great job in telling the story of his ingredients. So I thought maybe I should tell you what the judges are looking for when it comes to the cocktail itself. So the first thing a cocktail needs is a fantastic name. It has to be a name that jumps off a page on a menu, that makes you feel a certain way, or it takes you to a place, or it just gives you a hint as to what to expect in the cocktail itself. And I think you'll see that a lot of the drinks that, that have been on stage in the last two days really have given a lot of mind and a lot of thought to that. Well, Dublin, Ireland, you just saw that. And Connor, Connor, come here, bro. Here's a mic. We're going to rock down to Electric Avenue. <laughs> How was that? I don't know. How was it? <laughs> that was so good. Was it? Yeah, it was really good. Man, speak to Ireland. How was it? Guys, I hope I turned you all proud. Um, <laughs> this has been amazing. Do you need I'm, a hug? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I don't know what happened. I don't know why. I just blacked, blacked out. out. Yeah. <laughs> just autopilot. Autopilot. And I just hope I didn't forget the room. I don't think I have. No, the, the room, the room was, was in. in. That's a good. <laughs> so I snuck off. I snuck off to sit in the crowd to watch Connor. Um, Man. You did everyone proud. Awesome. Killer. Well done. Hey, everybody back home. <laughs> Thanks so much, guys. Stay tuned. I think we're going straight to another competitor right now. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Cheers.
Judges, are we ready? Yeah? Okay. The next nation to be represented is actually the home of Bacardi Legacy. So when we first started out this journey, the first two years under the stewardship of some of our great UK ambassadors, and I think I saw Shaveen arrive just before, started this Bacardi Legacy journey. And our next competitor is, uh, is certainly looking forward to taking that UK presence further. So please, a huge round of applause for Joe Harper. Joe, your time starts now. Hi guys, welcome to Berlin, how are we? <laughs> so the drink I'm gonna make for you today is, uh, is really a, a, a marriage of, of two classics from Bacardi's cocktail history, two of my favorites. Um, so you've got a missionary's downfall, which I love for many reasons, not least because its name speaks of this pious person's downfall to the dark temptation of tiki. Um, and an airmail, which is this eternal symbol of opulence and good news. So my inspiration for marrying these two drinks wasn't just because I love them both, I very much do, but it was actually because I found a letter, and this letter was written in 1950 by the Bacardi family, and it was sent to Ernest Hemingway uh, via airmail. And this letter was, uh, was actually an invitation, it was an invitation to a fishing competition that Hemingway entered in his little fishing boat, Pilar. Now, this word Pilar is interesting, it's, it, it means pillar in Spanish, it was, but it first came into the Spanish lexicon through the idea of Maria del Pilar, or Maria of the Pillar, the Virgin Mary. And that religious connotation wouldn't have been lost on Hemingway. He had a really tempestuous relationship with Christianity in his early life, um, and then later on, very cynically converted to Catholicism to appease his, to appease his second wife, Pauline, who he also called Pilar. And so this, this ship, uh, this little fishing boat, was somewhere he spent time away from her, and it's kind of a very tongue-in-cheek reference to his own religious downfall. Uh, and it was invited, as I said, by airmail to this competition. Now, Hemingway's always been a source of intrigue for me. Uh, he was the first character from cocktail history that I was ever really exposed to, and I always found the stories about him instantly charismatic and talking of this guy with incredible um, determination and spirit. Hemingway was also an incredibly resilient man. He survived anthrax, pneumonia, dysentery, skin cancer, anemia, diabetes, a ruptured kidney, a ruptured spleen, a ruptured liver, I'm not done, two, two crushed vertebrae, a fractured skull, and two plane crashes. Um, a big, I know, right? Uh, coming to his demise ultimately at his own hand. So it seems that uh, you know, the only thing that could kill Hemingway was Hemingway. This incredible resilient spirit, I think, is really something that we see in Bacardi's history as well, of overcoming their constant setbacks. But it's also echoed 
in the veterans in our industry. Bartending is an incredible, rewarding job, and, and I love it. But it's easy to forget that it's not always sunshine and rainbows. There are some really hard shifts and some really long days thrown into the mix as well. And I feel incredibly lucky and privileged that the mentors and leaders that I've had had the resilience to stick around long enough for me to benefit from their experience. And I can't express how special it is for me to be able to stand here on this stage in Berlin in front of all of you, representing my country where I met all of my mentors and leaders and in representing the industry back home that we all work at to try and make one of the best in the world. And so this drink is dedicated to these people, these mentors and leaders, uh, the pillars of our community, because if I ever do reach the heights of our industry, it will be because I've stood on the shoulders of giants. So to start out, we're going to take a nice, healthy measure, 40 mil, of Bacardi Carta Blanca for each drink. And then we're going to take 40 milliliters, so 20 mil per drink, of fresh lime juice. Now these two flavors are very much the first on stage when you taste the drink. Classic Bacardi and lime up front. They're going to move us into the botanical profile, which is going to come from, in part, fresh mint, and also from Rinkin Kin, which is a peach wine, but has, uh, has quinine in it as well. So we're going to take 30 milliliters of that for each drink. Now that wine note is going to give us an element of an air mail, and the peach in the Rinkin Kin is going to give us is going to give us the, uh, the, the little box tick for, for the missionary's downfall. And it's going to mingle really nicely on the end with the 20 mil each of pineapple syrup to balance. So we finish with those mingling fruity flavors on the end. I'm just going to give that a nice shake, if you're ready. So I didn't, don't usually shake that long. I was just really enjoying that. <laughs> a little for me. God, I love that drink. Okay. <laughs> So we're just going to finish this off once I've got it out of this beautiful shaker with 50 milliliters for each drink of soda water, which is going to give us an incredible, beautiful, sparkling texture and really help those fruity flavors come alive. So we just want 50 milliliters for each drink of that soda. There we are. And we're just going to garnish beautifully and simply with a nice aromatic mint leaf. And there we are, dedicated to the mentors and leaders in every, in, in every country around the world, Pilar. Enjoy. Don't let his innocent look fool you. He's quite sneaky. So one of my favorite cocktails is the missionary's downfall. And we have Pilar sitting in the audience. Hey. Hi. Mate, it's been a, it's been a fantastic week so far. Yeah. What has been your personal highlight? My personal highlight, um, so I sat with a couple of the other competitors for lunch the other day. And this unassuming guy came and sat down with us. And uh, was just like, oh, can I take the seat? Is it free? We were like, yeah, yeah, come and join us. And it came clear in, uh, you know, in, in a bit of conversation that it was actually David Sid, Master of Rums for Bacardi. And we had just this incredible conversation about you know, launching new products and so on and so on. It was so informative. So that was, that was pretty incredible. Yeah, we're, we're, we're really lucky in the support that we have here. We, we have some fantastic people who, who really get involved in legacy, from our maestros, our masters of rum, our bloody awesome judges. Uh, Joe Harper, UK. The 
So just on the judges, I've, I've talked a little bit about this, this weird concept of promoting a cocktail. And what is it that the judges will actually be looking for? So this whole concept, this whole idea is having a drink become famous outside your own bar. And we challenge the bartenders to do some pretty cool things. And the first thing that we look at is how are they actually promoting their drink inside their bar? So we look at that, and then we look at the crazy ways that they are promoting their drink outside the bar, which is where I think we see future trends emerge. This year, in my eyes, I think the trend that will probably continue uh, in the cocktail culture, in cocktail trade, and certainly in legacy, is this one of collaboration. One of the examples was... Cool. Right, we're live with Joe, who's just jumped off stage, Mr. Yeah. UK. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> um, I mean, it was incredible. The crowd were electric. Uh, I've got to thank Connor for that, I guess, because he just wakes everybody up, um, which was uh, great. I mean, it's kind of daunting going on so late in the, in, in the running order, but at the same time, you get the biggest crowd, and, and everyone kind of has seen so much already that it's, 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 they're ready to support, and it's, it's really cool. Yeah, it was a cool story. Out there, it was like you could hear a pin drop. Everyone was listening to exactly what you were saying. How did that make you feel? I mean, it was, it was great. I mean, I love the story, obviously, because, you know, I wrote it. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, I mean, every word was true. Hemingway is, um, has always been a really a real source of inspiration for me, and I do really consider those mentors and leaders that the drink's dedicated to probably the only reason I'm here. So, Bro, great. Congratulations. See you tonight for the, uh, the Top Ocho announcement. Good luck. <laughs> Cheers, man. Right, we're actually going to swing out. Luckily now, we have the last two people of the day. So we have... I'm literally getting in their way, so I'm going to be very quick. So we've got yeah. Alan, you're going up last. Yeah. No, that's a good thing then. Yes. Closing out the show, yeah. finishing on a high. And uh, I think all, uh, all, every audience is just looking for a dinner. <laughs> so everyone's ready for dinner and stuff. Yes. Cool, man. Well, we look forward to seeing you out there. Yeah. And second to last, we've got your, your teammate. Hello. You're going second last. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I'm always the second last from the regional and national, and now always second last. So it's lucky? Yes. It's a lucky place for you. Yes, <laughs> I love that. So, uh, so is everyone going to be watching back home? Yes, uh, my, my bar do have the big monitor that will <laughs> put the light on it. I don't know how many people will watch this, okay, so but yeah. Hi, <laughs> all of you from Taiwan, love you. And thanks for all your help so far. Really appreciate it. Cool, so you're getting ready to set up. What have you got? Uh, I've got rye whiskey, sherry, moda, of course, bocadillo ocho. <laughs> and my method is stir and the cinnamon powder. I will flame it and uh, clip the smoke in the glasses. And the presentation going to be very awesome. Yeah, nice. Yeah. So what these bartenders do is they look, these will have polished their glasses and their bar spoons about 20 times today, make sure everything's sparkly and shiny. So uh, well, I'm going to get out of your way so you can get ready. So stay tuned, guys, and we'll, uh, we'll see you shortly. Thanks. Can we have a really big round of applause this time for Christoph Hinkle, Germany.
Your time starts now. Hey, everybody. How it feels good? I just want to say chapeau. What does it mean, chapeau? Is it just a hat what you can carry on to look nice and smart? For me, it's a bit more. It's the act to raise the head. It means heads off. It shows mutual respect to somebody. I guess that's what we do every day in our bars. When people come in that we don't know, we embrace them with open arms. We recommend them good drinks and just want to make a good time for them, right? So let's go. So I've really found memories when I spent my holidays at my grandparents' place. It was a huge backward, backyard with trees from apples, pears, and walnuts. To be there, it was just a bless. I feel really, really safe. But now, people are just in a hurry. In the bar, they're posting photos from the drinks, they are online, just looking at the cell phones, they forgot to talk to each other. Also, you can see it at the streets, here in Berlin, where I live in Cologne, and I guess everywhere where you live. People are just in a rush. When they're crossing the street, they don't look left, don't look right. I would like to get a slower pace of time to bring back old values. These values that my grandparents taught me. For example, to trust in each other, helping each other, and spending time to each other. That's really important for me. I've really, really found memories to think back at this time when I helped my grandmother in the kitchen. We was cooking together and baking together. The smelling from fresh fruit, steamed cake, or a Sunday roast in the oven. That was amazing. And this stuck most of me in my head. When I was out with my grandfather in the garden, picked the fruits. That was really fun. And my favorite fruit is black currants. So I brought these black currants to my grandmother to make the cake ready. Also, when we were uh, cooking, we first, before we start the menu, we did salad together with salt and also with vinegar. Licorice, I tried the first time at my grandparents' house. That was a funny story, not for me, but definitely for my grandfather. So I've seen these little jellies, and I put it in my mouth. It was so intensive and strong by taste. I did this squeezy face when you bite in the lemon. Maybe you have seen it before. And he was really laughing about me. But also, he teach me something. Don't take the life too serious. The heart and the head of my drink is Bacardi Ocho, rum, rich in taste, full of body, and matched perfectly with all my other ingredients. It was also a special treat of my grandfather. When he finished a hard-working day, he, drops, he takes a little bit of rum. So why not for me? On my tour, when I was uh, promoting my drink, I met a lot of good person that helps me 
really, really, really well. For example, my BA, Dennis. He was amazing, definitely, thank you. Also, I met a lot of people on my tour, other competitors, and all these guys was behind me in the background. I got a really, really safe and warm feeling. This feeling you get just from your family. You guys, everybody knows, there was found one time the Club de Cantoneros. Still Bacardi is helping bartenders like me and you. I found a new club, the Chapeau Club. To have time with somebody, to tell us our story, and just met us, make new friendships. And this feeling I learned here from also the Cardi family. My drink, you see it, you can touch it, you can hear it. You can taste it, and when you drink it, you feel this, just to raise my head. Chapeau. I was just about to comment on how calm and controlled everything was, and then that happened. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm shaking. Um, I've, I've, I've watched your journey with particular interest because I've got to spend so much time in Germany this year. What's been the highlight for you of having the Cardi legacy here in Germany? To meet uh, so many people and to see how fast a big could grow. Yep. Um, again, I'd love to thank the German bartending community here in Berlin, but also in uh, the other great cities. Uh, Munich has been a very successful legacy city for Bacardi and now Cologne. So another big round of applause, please, for Christoph. Pretty loud and crazy back there. We're backstage because I've seen someone roaming around. Where is he? Where is he? Up, oh, Matt. Bro, how are you, man? What's up, brother? Good. Right, so I hear a little rumor back here. A little mut. A little mut. Oh, this is Mr. K this is Mr. Canada. Sorry. Yeah, Just thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry. I'm so excited. Sometimes people forget. Actually, we have a second mic here. Sorry. Um, <coughs> check, check. I, I, I missed that because I'm super excited about this. What's this about you being a rapper in your past life? Well, uh, yeah, will you hold my drink? Uh, so, sure. uh, well, I squeeze the mic like I'm trying to strangle it, but it's one of my best friends the way I always hang with it. In fact, I'm with the mic so much I start to call him Michael. No waste management in rap, garbage gets recycled. And they're not fat, in fact, they likely had a lipo. Suction to get famous until spontaneous combustion. Must have made a typo, swooped into the cyclone. And I know what you're wondering is true. Players only love you when it's raining. My initials are Mac. It only thunders when it's raining. When the weather changes from today and tomorrow, there's no difference. I say potato, potato, straight from the bottle. Lay awake is the motto. Walk with the footsteps that make a pothole bloom. 
Shut away the tears soon. Sounds got drowned out because I never made room. Something like something like that. Oh, so you were a rapper in your past then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man, that was so cool. Yeah, man. And uh, this is delicious. You're not having this back. Okay, it's all <laughs> yours. Cool, man. Congratulations. Say bye. So well, say hello to Canada. Canada, I do this for you. Halifax, Calgary, Montreal, Toronto, Vancouver, and everywhere in between. I love y'all. <laughs> Stay tuned, guys. We're going to go to the next competitor very soon. Matt, thanks so much, brother. At Bacardi Legacy, it's all about making a drink that's going to stand the test of time. And to do that, you need the right ingredients. People are having so much more passion for the craft of cocktail making. Everybody takes so much time, care and passion with the making of their ingredients. I use the Oro just to get that beautiful spice and just to carry it right through the pineapple. In my cocktail I use a homemade grenadine. Uncooked pineapple syrup, you can do it at home in your kitchen really easily. All you need is hot water, pineapple juice and sugar. Because I come from Taiwan and in Taiwan we do have the traditional black tea. The taste is just like that. There's art, there's science, there's history, there's all kinds of things and geography that comes into it because we're seeing much more use of indigenous ingredients and it makes the whole thing very, very exciting. I'm judging the semi-finals. It's very interesting because you meet a lot of amazing bartenders and you get to see their personalities both through what they present but also through what they serve you in the cocktail. At the semi-finals we judged 19 drinks a day so basically it's a six and a half hour session. <laughs> Participants have to create a unique cocktail and they're going to get judged not only on their performance on the stage and how great the drink tastes, they're going to get judged on the inspiration, the name, they're going to get judged on how they've established it in the industry, whether consumers are asking for it, whether bars are willing to sell it. It's the awareness of the drink on social media, in traditional media. It's quite a holistic package and actually it's all about establishing not a drink but a legacy into the future. Macau and Taiwan, Grace Tsai. Your time starts now. Okay. 
Hi. First of all, I want to thank uh, Bacardi Legacy and Bacardi family and all of the judges, Ian Burrell, Monica Burke, <laughs> Frank Deju, Klaus Renner, and uh, Tristan Stephenson, and all of the ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming. Welcome. I come from hotel, the place Tainan brought 21. I'm Grace. I come from Taiwan. <laughs> it's my great honor to be here to share a story about me, Bacardi, and my legacy cocktail, Apostle, with you all. Apostle is about people who have a strong faith and believing deeply. It's for everyone who has looked for their passion, purpose, or faith. A thing in our life that makes us feel whole. And when I discovered the bartending and the Bacardi family, I found it. Their story and resilience inspire me because they never give up on their principles. They champion their beliefs. They are apostles of their faith. I'm inspired by them. That's why I called my legacy cocktail Apostle. Apostle represent the people who have a strong spirits and passions. We all searching for this spirit, something we craft to make us complete. So I choose an American rye whiskey to represent the Bacardi history with the U.S. Simultaneously, celebrating opportunity and challenges. Challenges which this challenges which this family. Challenges which these apostles made head on and prospered from. Having a strange state course shows a deeply rooted passion. P. X. Sherry symbolizes the origins of Mr. Don Fanquindo, a Spanish immigrant and a Cuban entrepreneur who never gave up, even he went through so many rough events like being colonized and exiled. Chocolate can bring sweetness and bitterness which is means every up and down we made in our life. And then, Bacardi Ocho. The best barrel aged wrong, plus in the trout oak barrel and waiting passionately for eight years to have a perfect balanced taste aroma, containing the flavors like chocolate, valina, and honey. So, Bacardi Ocho. To link all these ingredients together perfectly, just like us. Champions of our passions. Can all be linked with the passions and the perseverance of Bacardi family? The reason we are here today. Before starting, I'm going to flame the cement powder first and keep the smoke in the glasses. The essence of the smoke in the glass is just like a barrel aging of Bacardi Ocho. Develop deep and the mellow flavors with the hint of spice that linger on our five cents. I come from a totally alcohol-free family. I'm a girl and the only child to my mom. So when I choose to be a bartender, she was concerned and disagreed with my choice. At that time, I thought bartending was just a short -term job. But over time, I developed deeper passion for our industry, the same industry that has allowed me to travel here and share my story with you on the Bacardi Legacy stage. During this journey that Bacardi gave me, I met lots of inspiring people. Many of them faced the similar challenges just like me, but they believe their principles and never give up. Eventually bring success they are apostles of their faith. It deepens my belief that bartending is not just a short term job. It is a long term career when you believe in yourself and act as your own apostle. For the cinnamon powder flame, it's to represent after war, fire accident. Bacardi is becoming better and better. Just like when good things take time, want to reach the goal that we want needs to take times two. And I put Apostle in your brandy snifter. It's because good spirits always come with snifter to show how important this cocktail is and how important Bacali legacy is. <laughs> Our 
our industry and our guests are incredible. I wouldn't be here without their support. During my journey, I asked them to sign my apron because I wanted to share their faith and belief with you all. Today, I stand on their shoulders and share with them a belief that if you truly desire something and work hard enough for it, there's nothing in the way. Apostle, it's more than a cocktail. It's a true story of passionate people who champion their belief despite any hardship. Apostle is for you, for Bokali Legacy, for never give up. So, be an apostle of your faith. Be the legend of your life. And let's keep passing on Bokali Legacy and our own legacy. Thank you. Come here, Grace. Yeah. Now, okay, that was spectacular. For a, you know that, you saw it. Now, where are you actually from in Taiwan? Tainan. And, <laughs> and that has a little bit of history with Bacardi Legacy, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, I, uh, Tainan is the same hometown as Xi'an. <laughs> it's the same hometown as uh, current, I guess, for another 24 hours, Bacardi Legacy Champion, Mr. Jian Chan. <laughs> Has that given you an unfair advantage? Mm, maybe not. Okay, <laughs> well done, ladies and gentlemen, please. Great sigh. Okay, so now I'm here with last year's global champion, Mr. Jian Chen. Um, welcome. So, man, your last 12 months must have been crazy. Like, tell me about it. It's been amazing and crazy, both same way. I mean, I've been traveling around, and pretty much every month I have two weeks or three weeks in in town and just keep out there and, and explore. I would say I met tons of people and been in lots of different cities, experienced different culture, food, and beverage. So it just it changed my, my life, and it, I've been learning so much that I never thought I would be able to reach. So, yeah. so what, will, what will everyone this week kind of be feeling? How will they be kind of like um, getting ready for, for, the, for the finals? I would say um, stay focused. Like the, most of the competitors, I think they, are, they all... Uh, they already like put a lot of effort to be here, so I'm, I'm sure they are nervous. I'm sure they are excited, but I would say uh, stay focused and also enjoy your week. Enjoy the, the vibe, the competition. Get this chance to know lots of people, and then just shine on. Just do your best and rock on the stage. <laughs> Watching uh, in China, they China is amazing at this stuff, right? They, were, they had Bacardi uh, recipes and Bacardi rums for sale uh, while you're watching. They, they sold out of Bacardi during the first two hours of the footage. And then just to make it better, they sold out of Martini as well. So we love you, China. Thank you very much for being awesome. <laughs> Judges, are you ready for your final competitor? Frank, you're just stretching out that last moment on the stage, aren't you? Okay. Can we have one final massive welcome to the stage from China, Mr. Alan Fung.
The out to sea means the courage to go out and adventure, which claims that I left my hometown and moved to Shanghai city. And it also represents out to sea, out brave, to leave my comfort zone, to prove and see the world beyond your imagination. So here I am. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Alan Fang from Barus, Shanghai. And today, I will share my legacy cocktail, Out to Sea, and stands for my country, China. So why is Out to Sea? I was born in seaside and grew up with the sea water and waves. And you guys can call me a descendant of ocean. The sea made a human a living, which I could have such wisdom and courage to fish. But life is the same as the waves. It gave me a deeply hard lesson. I lost the sense of touch of my three fingers by an accident on the sea 10 years ago. I can't feel any cold or hurt or even hold a chopstick stable. But because of it, I gave my courage to go, to leave my comfort zone, and also want to go out to see more. A Mr. Facundo Bacardi also projects the spirit of out to sea. He left his hometown and moved to San Diego de Cuba, start running his run history. But life is, is, same, is giving me the same tasting. The Bacardi family experienced Prohibition era, World War II, and Cuban Revolution through 1920 to 1960. But it still product high quality rums and promo cocktail culture. And meanwhile, Fernet Bitter has the complex taste and bitterness with the medicine, which also could be sold in Prohibition era. Fernet liquor can give spice, dry fruit, and sweetness. It was part of necessity in the most popular tea time. True passion cannot be tamed. In dark days, let's elements cooperate with the Bacardi rum made a cocktail culture booming for war. And till now, it's passage to, to all the bartenders who see right here. So guys, go with me. Let's salute and chase. Oh, wait. It's not time to celebrate. <laughs> Too many ocean last night. And also, we don't forget a run, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bacardi Color also has the chocolate, vanilla, and coffee flavor. It can come back with all the ingredients and impress you aging in dark and wet place, but struggling every night. It's just like my life. So that's why Bacardi also can inspire me. And during to three years recovery of my lost fingers, I quit my job as a salesman, and I decided to travel to London with my bartender friends. On the journey, we visit to his spirit mentor, the father of Espresso Martini, Mr. Dick Brasso. And my friend told me, he said, I want to show you this because you didn't lose everything. Instead, you could do some more. Don't be an ordinary person. Unfortunately, Mr. Brasso passed away in 2016. He carried his pen, but still behind the bar, kept doing bartending. And my friend, who inherited his spirit, became my mentor. And also brought me into the bar industry to be the part of the legacy. So today, I finally stay here, this stage, in front of the, all the best bartenders in the world. The seas of water is not only represent me. It means all the tears and sweat 
behind the bone of the outer sea. And now, nothing in my way. I got a value of my hands. And I chose the Nikon Laura glass between the uh, Martini and Cooper glass. Can make some more beautiful foam on the top. And the garnish to waste the chocolate powder. Ouch. <laughs> to enhance the coffee and the Bacardi Ultra flavor. To me, <laughs> The taste of fat, just like Bacardi, which doesn't make us lose everything, but grant us the courage to go out to sea. So I will carry this spirit along with my drink, my hands, and my legacy. So let's go out to sea. Uh, he said, don't forget the rum. You know who I'm talking to. <laughs> don't forget the rum. Don't forget the rum. Yes. Adam asked me to ask you an easy question. Yes. <laughs> I'm not going to. Yeah. Actually, I want to say well done. Uh, you come from a nation, in the last three years, you have three final ocho. Yes. You had Choni, you had Faye, yes. you had Carson. Yes. And uh, actually, Faye and Choni, and this year is Yes. <laughs> Don't forget, Carson. <laughs> what would you like to say to everyone at home who's watching you today? Tell who? Johnny? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. I know you guys are looking for a dinner, but thank you. Thank you, every Chinese audience. Yes, we killed it. You can say it in uh, Mandarin if you like. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> they, they understand it. Yeah. Why was this so complicated? <laughs> well done. Our final competitor, Mr. Alan Fong from China. Well done. Woo. Well done, well done. And that's it. All 38 competitors have been on the stage, have made their fantastic cocktails, have been judged. But I'd like to invite one final person to the stage who's been, uh, who's been out back and bringing the rest of the live feed to you. Barney, welcome, brother. Hey, guys. Hey, everyone at home. Um, this is just an announcement for everyone back home. Thank you so much for watching over the last couple of days. Um, we've reached thousands and thousands of people. Um, and I just want to say that you can, uh, you can catch the top eight at around 9.45 p.m. Berlin time. We won't be broadcasting this live. You can find it out on the Facebook page, Twitter, and Instagram. And you can uh, join me again tomorrow at the grand final at around 7.10. We go live to see all the stuff. I'll generally just be annoying people again like I've been for the last couple of days. Um, thanks for letting me come on stage, Dickie. Thank you, guys. You've been awesome. Thank you. And there we have it. For everyone watching at home, for everyone in the audience, thank you. It's been a fantastic couple of days and an exciting evening awaits. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>